Hi everyone and welcome to our first Configmas for 2023. It is Christmas Day. We have just fit the ponies their Christmas dinner. Extra apples and carrots, of course. We will have a, our own dinner in just a few hours here, but I sneak down to the lab to record a video. My name is Johan Avridmark, and in this video I will show you one of my favorite topics how to preach cache content for config manager. And that means demo time. So here's the scenario. I have a config manager environment. I have a few remote distribution points. I have a branch office where I have a few clients. Pre-caching content is very useful. Say that you, in two weeks time, know that you are about to upgrade a few hundred machines in a remote office or deploy a large application, it could be office, could be anything else that is fairly big to deploy. And you want to make sure that that deployment goes as quick as possible. And especially if you have slow WAN links, it really makes a difference pre-caching that content out beforehand, before starting deployment in that office. And I'll show you some tips in this video on how to do that. But first, I wanted to show you a little bit on how Bits works behind the scenes. Because when the config manager client is downloading content on its own, it is using a Bits transfer to download that file of those files. And you can monitor that through the event log, through a bit of PowerShell, and, and some other techniques. So, to set the scene here, if I go to one of my clients, this one here, I have deployed a test package to it, but I'm going to head and clear the cache, both config manager as well as branch cache. And then I'm going to head and download that package or reinstall that package. As soon as the download starts, I can open up a command prompt. And I can ask the good old bits admin to show me, all right, what is it that you currently are doing while I'm transferring this job? If you want to see a more real time view, you can use bits admin with a refresh rate and it will show you as the file is coming down using a bits job for this particular package. So this package only has one single file about 300 meg in size. All right, the file downloaded or the download finished. So I'm going to abort this monitoring. And I'm going to head over to the event log because you might have noticed earlier that I did clear out the bits event log using a PowerShell command. So if I go to the event log, refresh this view here, you can see there is a few bits events. The one that you're interested in is this one here, number 60, meaning a completed download. I can see that it transferred about uh, 300 megs. And if I scroll down here, you can see that was only a tiny portion of that that came from a peer. And that is because I didn't have any peers on this subnet that have the full package content of this, of this package. Apparently there were some other clients having a few blocks of the content, but nothing that have it all, because this was the first client to download the full package. Now, if I would go over to another machine, this one here, again, I'm going to clear the cache. And I'm going to go ahead and install the same package. So I'm going to go to my applications, so 300 meg. And I will pick the same package here, and I'm going to install this one. The download starts, and you might notice it downloads a little bit quicker than previous file. The download is finished, and once again, I can open up the event log. Find the bits event log. Look at number 60 again, or event ID 60. The details. 
still 300 meg transferred, but in this case, most of the content came from a peer. Now, you may wonder why you don't see the exact number of bytes, even though the entire file was downloaded. And that is indeed because branch cache does state the duplication of content. I will give you a great example. Say that you download 20 driver packages that may be 40 gigs of content up on a distribution point. But when downloaded to the client, there is a lot of blocks in each of these packages that are identical. And branch cache enough, is smart enough to remove those blocks even during the network transfer, but also when they're stored locally on the disk. So you may find that you only use half of that space uh, in the cache compared to what you have up on your distribution point. So that's pretty cool. But what if you have more than one package that you want to have available? Well, that's when using sequences for peer caching content comes in play. So if I go over here to my site server, I have a pre cache sequence that I made. As you can see, this one is referencing a ton of different packages. If I want to see how big the sequence is, of course I could go ahead and summarize all of these in Excel or something clever like that. But Trevor Jones actually put together a really nice PowerShell script. I'm gonna share the link here in the, in the description below, but here is the, the blog post that he put together. But this is just the PowerShell script that takes any sequence you have, so I'm going to take the name of that sequence. Copy the name. Go back to the script. And I will run it. And it will tell me that here are all the packages, here are the sizes. And if you look up here, you can see that the total size of this sequence is almost 11 gigs in size. The trick to force the configmatic client to pre-cache content without actually doing anything is to do the following. You right-click the sequence. And as you can see, I have added a ton of different download package content actions to this one. One for each package that I want to have available on at least a few clients in the remote office. But the trick is up on this one. I have a condition on it. So, this one will never run because I have a condition said never true equals true and it's never going to be true. So the trick is when I deploy this one on the deployment itself, we actually pick the right sequence. On the deployment itself, I have configured to download all content locally before starting a sequence. Now, if I go to my client, go to Software Center, search for Excel one Here's my pre-caching sequence. If I run that one, it's now going to pre-cache all of those packages that that sequence referenced. Behind the scenes is actually a ton of different bits you have starting up. So if I go back to the command prompt here this time, and for example, list um, all jobs that are currently running, you can see there is a ton of jobs being queued up to transfer content down to the client. But after a while, all of these packages will be available on this particular machine. And that means that, say that this is the machine I'm, I'm currently pre-caching to. And that means that once the content is there, when I deploy other machines like these guys, they will be able to get the content from the first one without having to download it over the WAN link here. If you want to learn a little bit more about this, I have a few different pre-caching uh, posts up on my blog. And if I can type pre-caching, it would be great. Here we go. So I'll post these links in the description below. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I will post another video tomorrow. Bye for now.